So welcome to the last part of today's lecture on eigenvalues and eigenvectors. I kind of led into this in my last part is like, why would we be interested in eigenvalues and eigenvectors? And one of the first things that's kind of useful is that it can actually determine whether your matrix is invertible or not. So the following theorem is saying that A is not an invertible matrix if and only if, and if you had a chance to think about it, is that if lambda equals zero is an eigenvalue. So if you find that zero is an eigenvalue of your matrix, your matrix A cannot be invertible. And let me give you a proof of that, because it's just a couple lines long. We know that lambda equals zero is an eigenvalue. It's the same thing as saying that a times x equals zero times x uh, has a non-trivial solution. Okay, but before I go into the next line, just notice that because I'm doing a scalar multiple of zero, this is the same thing as saying that ax equals zero has a non-trivial solution, but whenever a homogeneous system of equations has a non-trivial solution, that means that A is not invertible. And that's it to the proof. We've uh, shown that if zero is an eigenvalue, your matrix A is not invertible. So again, like determinant and eigenvalues, these are all can be used tools to measure the invertibility of your matrix. Here's another nice theorem that kind of comes out when we're looking at eigenvectors and eigenvalues, okay? So in this statement here, you have V1, V2 up to VR are eigenvectors that correspond to distinct eigenvalues, lambda one up to lambda R of an M by N matrix. So it's saying that, okay, lambda one is one of the eigenvalues and its eigenvector is V1. Lambda two is a different eigenvalue and it has an eigenvector V2 and so on. Well, then the nice thing is that if you knew this condition, then the set of vectors V1 through VR is linearly independent. Okay, so eigenvectors coming from different eigenvalues form a linearly independent set. And then, so a nice consequence of this is that an N by N matrix, maybe I should put, Write it like this, an M by N matrix A has at most N distinct eigenvalues. Okay, and why is this true? Well, if you had distinct eigenvectors, right, you, you, sorry, if you had distinct eigenvalues, they would each have their corresponding eigenvectors. So the eigenvectors, are inside of Rn, and Rn can have at most n linearly independent elements, or linearly independent vectors, because Rn is an n-dimensional vector space. So if I had way more eigenvalues, I would be able to find a whole whack of uh, eigenvectors inside of Rn that were linearly independent, but because they're in Rn, I'm forced to have at most n of these, okay? So that's kind of a nice useful consequence too, that we're only gonna be seeing n distinct eigenvalues when we're, uh, when we're looking at it. So there's actually kind of one question here that you sh should think about is we kind of gave a hint about finding eigenvectors. You could kind of replicate something that I did in the second part of today's lecture. But there's one part that we haven't really dived deeply into is how do you find the eigenvalues of a matrix? This theorem here and this consequence says that while well, you can find at most n of them, how do I actually get my hands on them? And how do I tell how many is in my matrix? So that's actually the general case will be um, will be described in the next class. But in instead, I want to end off today with just doing a special case about finding the eigenvalues. 
And so the eigenvalues of a triangular, and this could be an upper or lower uh, uh, matrix. Maybe, I, here, let me write this out. So this should be a triangular upper or lower matrix are simply the entries on the diagonal. Are the entries on the diagonal. And I won't do the general case, but I'll just do a special case. I'll do the three by three case only, just so you can get a feeling of how it works and you can go look in the textbook to see what happens in general. So, Here's a matrix, but I want to make it a triangular matrix. So let me uh, first, because it's a triangular matrix, I actually will have all zeros in these spots right here. So I should have zero here, a zero here, and a zero here. And then because that's the form, if I take A minus lambda I3, I will get, oh, I won't have enough room to do it here. So let me just move it down to the next line. I will have, a11 minus lambda, A12, A13, 0, A22 minus lambda, and A23, and 0, 0, and A33 minus lambda. So what we know is that this system here as a non-trivial solution if and only if we can make uh, if has a non-trivial solution if we can make it so that one of these guys fails to be a pivot right so that would mean the same thing as saying that a minus lambda i3 has a free variable And we can make the system have a free variable if we let lam lambda equal a11, a22, or uh, a33. For example, if I put a33 in here, then I would have a zero here and I would be introducing a free variable in that spot. Okay, so tomorrow, it, or in depending upon when you watch this, we will, um, be looking at uh, how to find eigenvalues and then from there we can talk about eigenvectors. So these are kind of the key concepts of today's class and hopefully you can see the cartoon a little bit better. Uh, hopefully if you understood uh, what was going on in today's class you would think that this is funny. Okay so hopefully you find it funny uh, and we will pick up uh, in the next lecture. Have a great day.